Hello, hello! Welcome to another episode of Prehistory in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous patrons and my channel members over at our sister channel, History in the Dark. You are the reason why this content remains just full of nothing but lies! No, I actually try to avoid that personally, but today, we're going to discuss one of the most infamous hoaxes in the history of paleontology. See, the thing about any kind of historical research, you have to watch out for liars, filthy, rotten, dirty liars who will try to fake discoveries in order to enhance their own careers. And this is the story of one such case. The Piltdown Man. Our story begins with a man named Charles Dawson. Dawson was, well, an amateur paleontologist, and even described as that, that would be very, very generous, because he is known as a proven fraud, repeatedly. At least 38 confirmed times he lied about fines, and even though he wasn't proven to be solely responsible for the Piltdown Man, the vast majority of the evidence suggests that, no, he totally did it. At a meeting of the Geological Society of London on December 18th, 1912, Dawson claimed that a workman at the Piltdown Gravel Pit had given him a fragment of a skull four years prior to that date. He went on to explain that the reason the skull was fragmented at all was because the workman had destroyed it accidentally, believing it was a fossilized coconut. He personally revisited the site on several occasions and found further fragments of the skull. Dawson took the fragments to a man named Arthur Smith Woodward, who was not a notorious fraud and was a respected researcher of the past, and also the keeper of the geological department at the British Museum. Woodward was pretty interested in with what Dawson had found, and he even accompanied Dawson back to the gravel pit. They worked together to find more fragments, though, interestingly, Dawson alone was the one to recover more pieces of the skull. I guess he must have been just, just really lucky, you guys. I mean, he, he's just that good, is what it was. It's definitely not, not suspicious at all. Also, that skull was the only one discovered on site. At the same Geological Society of London meeting, Woodward announced that a reconstruction of the fragments indicated that the skull was very similar to that of a modern human, except for the lower part that sat on the spinal column, as well as the brain size, which was about two-thirds smaller than that of a modern human. Additionally, the jawbone was actually indistinguishable from that of a young chimpanzee. It was presented as an evolutionary missing link between apes and humans. Now, the term missing link gets brought up a lot, but in the modern day, it's generally considered very unscientific to say that. It's just kind of a nothing thing. It doesn't really mean anything. I mean, it does, in the sense of it indicates some kind of evolutionary link that shows obvious transitionary traits. But evolution is very complicated, and it takes place over a very long time. A single species missing link, as if one species jumped to this, then immediately jumped to the next one, is just not really a thing that occurs. It's a slow transition, and there really aren't any missing links, because we can see transitionary changes in the fossil record already. But back then especially, it was still kind of an accepted idea, since, well, the entire field was still fairly new, as was evolution as a concept in general. The Piltdown Man also showed paleontologists what they expected to see, because at the time, the prevailing theory in England was that human evolution actually began with the brain. So a larger-brained ape-like creature was already in line with what they already believed to be the case. But from the outset, Woodward's reconstruction met with strong criticism. At the Royal College of Surgeons, copies of those same fragments that were presented were used to produce an entirely different model from Woodward's, one where the brain size and other features resembled that of a modern human. But the find was also considered legitimate from other respected paleontologists. The issue at the time was less that the find was an outright fake, and more that Woodward may have gotten his reconstruction slightly wrong, which wouldn't have been uncommon back then either. A handful attempted to criticize the remains as it appeared to be just a human skull 
but with an ape jaw. But supporters of the fine were more prevalent, and Dawson wasn't well known as a fraudster at the time. Yeah, he had committed some, but it wasn't highly publicized. Not many people knew that he was already kind of notorious for doing this. And in fact, he would do it again, since the Piltdown Man thing was going so well. In 1915, he claimed that he found three more fragments of a second skull at a new site about two miles away from the original one. Woodward attempted to figure out where Dawson had found these new remains, but Dawson never told him. It's almost like he never actually found those anywhere. There, there was no site. It's almost like it might have been a lie. Hilariously, a memorial stone was placed at the Piltdown Man Discovery site on July 23rd, 1938. Sir Arthur Keith unveiled it and finished his speech on the occasion saying, so long as man is interested in his long past history, in the vicissitudes which our early forerunners passed through, and the varying fare which overtook them, the name of Charles Dawson is certain of remembrance. We do well to link his name to this picturesque corner of Sussex, the scene of his discovery. I have now the honor of unveiling this monolith dedicated to his memory. From the time of the initial announcement of the discovery, this hoax persisted in the scientific community for 41 years. One of the longest times that any such hoax has lasted without some kind of detection. Yeah, again, some people did call it out, but most didn't. It's just a prank, bros. In November 1953, Time Magazine finally published evidence that had been gathered by several different scientists that proved that the Piltdown Man was a forgery and demonstrating that the fossil was a composite of three different distinctive species. It had some parts of a human skull from the medieval age, a 500-year-old lower jaw of an orangutan, as well as chimpanzee fossil teeth. Someone had created the appearance of age by staining the bones with an iron solution and chromic acid, and microscopic examination revealed that there were file marks on the teeth, meaning that someone had modified them to a shape more suited to a human diet. And the community from then on pretty much concurred that, yeah, he got us. He got us good. But did he do it? All on his own? Well, it's hard to say, and we will likely never know for sure if he acted alone. Though it is pretty well understood that Dawson was probably the main one behind this whole thing. After all, he'd already done it before. This just happened to be the one that stuck, and people actually believed for an insane length of time, several decades after he died, in fact. As for the legacy of the hoax, well, it's done some good and some bad. The good part is that now scientists are more vigilant when it comes to looking at these kinds of things, knowing that hoaxes are always possible, and the investigation that went into determining how and why the Piltdown Man was in fact a total fake are still used to identify modern hoaxes. It helped develop tools of detection and identifying future ones. We'll likely never get one that lasts nearly as long as the Piltdown Man because paleontologists aren't as keen to accept every discovery they see right in front of them without some level of skepticism and thoughtful inquiry. But on the bad side, well, it did taint the paleontological community for many years while it was accepted, and it's kind of a routing joke now, but it also is something that is conveniently and constantly cited by creationists as a cherry-picked incident to enhance their point that paleontologists are completely dishonest liars, all of them, every single one. They're totally making this up. It's a conspiracy. Which is, of course, ridiculous. You can't just use this one incident from an amateur paleontologist, no less. Not an actual professional one, who was known to be a forger, and say that they're all lying. Because, it, honestly, if they were all lying, why would they determine this one to be a fake at all? Why wouldn't they just keep presenting it as fact if they were a bunch of liars? It doesn't even make any sense. As for why Dawson was so about these hoaxes, well, it seemed to be he just wanted to make a name for himself, as a lot of scientists do to some extent, but obviously he was going about it the wrong way. Instead of trying to find legitimate things, he was making a lot of stuff up. Though I suppose you could argue that he kind of did wind up going down in history as a result of his antics. I mean, we're talking about him now as a complete and total fraud, but hey, we are talking about him, so, uh, I guess, 
That's a half win? I don't know. Happy April Fools, everybody. Until next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.